What does family mean to you? Does it mean people that you're related to by blood and genetics? Does family mean the group of varying individuals that sometimes get together around holidays and the celebrations of milestones for children? Birthday parties, graduations, the occasional religious ceremony, usually for your cousins, those age group relations you may know personally to a degree, that area of family outside your siblings you might be able to get the closest to. Are you close to your cousins? Do you consider them friends of yours? How well do you know them? Really, how well do you know them? Or rather, for all the time you've spent with your closest cousins, significant portions of family parties away from authoritarian aunts and uncles, play dates, reunion outings, have you actually known them as well as you think? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you have! They're your cousins, they're your blood, they're your friends. You know them, you can trust them. That's why it's always sad to hear about the state of affairs in the homes of extended family when things aren't going too well. Sometimes our cousins, even our closest ones, can be a bit troubled, unhappy, going through a rough patch or two. And feeling considerate, feeling friendly, you reach out to them, knowing they'll respond with such a close history between the two of you. Except they don't. No words between you, and you wonder why the silence continues as you go over a mental checklist of all the incidents of odd behavior or troubling news you've heard about your friend by blood over the years. The memories of aunts or uncles mentioning psychiatric visits intermixed with weekend sleepovers and it creates a cold, uneasy feeling inside you. Months later, you finally receive word about your cousin's condition. He's dead, life taken by his own hand. You knew he was troubled, but suicide? You didn't expect that. As you stumble through the confusion and begin to feel grief edging into your mind, you think of the last time you saw them and wonder if they exhibited any symptoms or alarming behavior at all. And that's when you remember. You have a videotape of the whole experience. If there's any way to see, any way to catch early signs you might have missed, it would be on the tape. And beyond the need to investigate, you just want to see your cousin and your friend alive again. This is the situation presented by college age Noah Maxwell in June of 2010. Originally meant for a Judaic tribe study at school that was cancelled at the last minute, Noah converted his YouTube channel for the project to be a memorial dedicated to his deceased cousin Milo Asher. Milo had come down from Alabama to visit Noah in Florida for a weekend in May of 2008, and Noah, having just bought a new camera, decided this would be a great opportunity to test it out and just have a nice record of Milo's visit. Noah had completely forgotten that he'd recorded the weekend after Milo left, and this is his first time viewing the footage. Noah uploads six submissions containing different portions of the weekend. In the beginning of Milo's trip, we see the tape interrupted by short fits of visual and auditory distortion and notice that Milo has a cough that just doesn't quit. Noah comments that he's always had that strange cough as they hang around in the backyard where a symbol has been drawn on the cement. During their first day visiting, Milo and Noah drove to nearby Victor Park and explored some of its nature trails, the first of which included an observation tower. Going up the tower, it's easy to spot some more odd symbols carved into the wood, but that's just the beginning of weird activity. Who has the patience to carve this stuff into this, like, fire-resistant wood? We need to go. Why? We need to go. Now. Uh, okay. Where are you going? Why are you going? Hey, hey, wait up! Where the hell are you going, man? Hurry up! Noah and Milo seem to go straight from the nature trail to a boardwalk through natural wetland leading out to the water. They explore the boardwalk to its end, and on the way back, the camera starts acting up. That's what I did, yeah. Was that one person you can? Yeah. It's kind of weird if you eat a fish, you know. Just being taken up out of your natural So, Milo, what do you want to do next? I think we should go home. Why? We have a few hours of light. I mean, it's only six. 
It's getting dark, man. You okay, man? We gotta go now. What the heck, man? Dude, don't go run off on me like that. Damn it! Things turn a bit more unnerving as Noah discovers Milo had taken his camera that night and done some recording of his own. Heavy distortion kicks in for a bit and returns when Milo stops to take his pills in the kitchen. He picks up the camera again and starts looking through the windows. The ending footage isn't lost on Noah. He has a Twitter account to match the YouTube channel and on June 9th he posts, I didn't sleep last night. I'm still thinking over the footage I posted in submission number 3. Submission 4 details a return to Victor Park where Milo asks to go to an observation tower they haven't visited yet. The audio is distorted throughout the clip and has brief moments of correcting itself. At the tower there's yet another symbol carved into the picnic table and Noah's camera catches something on the upper level. The camera cuts away to a new location with Noah and Milo walking. Noah gets a phone call and passes the camera to Milo who soon spots a man standing in an open area of grass watching them. He sprints away and Noah closes the submission with this message. After I caught up with Milo, he said he wanted to leave immediately and head home. I had never seen him so afraid before. Back then I didn't think anything of the way Milo was acting. But now as I view this footage, I feel really bad that I didn't keep in contact with him. Negative emotions turn into physical sensations for Noah the next day. I have a massive headache tonight. I'll continue viewing the tape tomorrow. To my memory, there isn't much footage of Milo's visit left. In submission 5, Noah and Milo are driving back from Victor Park and Noah asks just what's going on with him. Milo says it's personal and that he shouldn't worry about it. Once they're at the house, we can see Milo writing in a journal and there's a moment where the motions of his hand let us know he's scratching the familiar symbol from earlier into the page. Late into the night, Milo takes the camera again and goes around the house, even leaving the home to explore the yard. Visual and auditory distortion interrupt the footage at several points. Submission 6 details Milo's exit on Monday morning. Noah states that there are several highly distorted shots he doesn't remember filming, including one especially shocking sequence. We get back to the footage as it started with Noah seeing Milo out. After he leaves, Noah realizes Milo forgot his pills and puts the camera down for a moment, allowing us to see an intruder outside the window down the hall. The man vanishes and Noah ends the tape. He can't explain the extra footage on the tape or the massive amount of audiovisual defects. However, he's noticed the recurring distortion doesn't seem to be a coincidence and will not only be analyzing the footage but posting his findings.
Tape analysis arrives shortly after in which Noah makes the connection between camera errors and Milo's moments of panic. He's also been seeing a man that appears in the tape several times. Noah is terrified after realizing the man has been in his house. I have not been able to sleep well for several days. The fact that I have to question the validity of Milo's paranoia is making me paranoid. I've been called upon to attend Milo's funeral in New York. His family has a burial plot there. I'm catching a plane tomorrow. Went to the funeral and then saw my grandfather Carl. Had a very odd day. A video will be posted soon. I need to get back home. Noah uploads footage from the day of Milo's funeral in New York on July 12th. Upon arrival, he learned that Milo had been cremated and buried, but the family ceremony hadn't been performed yet. His death had been deemed a suicide, though his mother had private investigators search his room just in case. They discovered various caches of pills hidden in the closet, and the toxicology report only confirmed what the police filed. Milo had overdosed on a mixture of sleeping pills and depression anxiety medication. Noah tried speaking with Milo's mother at the funeral, but his aunt seemed to be actively avoiding him. In the one instance Noah managed to catch her, he asked if she'd seen the videos he had on YouTube, and she said that not only had she not, she didn't want to, and especially didn't want to be filmed. Two days later, Noah uploads footage of a visit with his grandfather, Carl, who only speaks German and immigrated to the United States after World War II. Prior to his trip north from Milo's funeral, Noah had received an email from Carl in German saying he'd seen his videos and needed to speak to him. Noah doesn't understand how Carl knew he was going to be in New York. His parents hadn't told him Noah was going down from Milo's funeral. He also doesn't know how Carl found the YouTube videos, but knows he only has his email address after Noah's father requested he send Carl his high school graduation pictures a few years back. Despite how odd the circumstances surrounding this meeting are, Noah goes to his grandfather and records the visit. Carl tells the story of how he grew up in a town near Germany's Black Forest, where his mother would tell tales of a monster that lived in the woods named the Grossman, who stole children that ran away from home. As an intelligence spy for the Allies during World War II, he had an espionage mission in the Black Forest where they encountered a panicked Nazi running from something that couldn't be seen. The man had a broken arm and leg but was still struggling on. The group tried to find out what was after him until the Grossman appeared wearing a black suit. He had no face and many arms like an octopus, Carl says. They shot at him but it had no effect. The Grossman grabbed the Nazi soldier with a tentacle and disappeared. No trace of him was ever found. Carl has seen the Grossman in Noah's videos and felt the need to warn him, but in telling his story, he's picked up a growing bad energy around Noah and he must leave the house now. Carl kicks Noah out amid a shot of visual distortion and though Noah tries to get back in, Carl only insists that he go away. On July 20th, we see the direction Noah's state of mind takes as a result of the recent developments in his life. I can't walk around my house at night. It's nerve-wracking. I literally have not had a comfortable night of sleep in weeks. I think about the tape every night. That guy in the suit. Insomnia. I didn't sleep at all tonight. I kept hearing noises around the house. I don't think it's the house settling. These sounded different. These noises are scaring the shit out of me. I'm filming tonight so I can try and catch what I'm hearing on tape. Posting my findings soon. Last night's footage was disappointing. None of the sounds in question were picked up, but I definitely heard them. I'll try again tonight. The camera finally picked up some audio during the night. Also found something outside. Video will be posted within the week, God willing. Noah opens his next video on August 9th by saying he's heard noises during the night and is trying to catch them on tape. He goes to sleep and collects a few uninterrupted hours until about 2.45 a.m. when major distortion hits and kills the night vision on the camera. The following clip shows the camera in what seems to be a pool house in the middle of a lightning storm, followed by black and white distortion of someone running across steps. And then, Noah's room at 3.32am. He wakes at 3.33 and starts coughing. Noah gets up, sets the camera on his bedside table, and turns on the light. The lights start flashing and then go out. After hearing some serious noise in the house, Noah grabs a knife and leaves his room, looking for intruders. Noises outside bring him to the pool area and we can see this is where the camera had been set up during the lightning storm. Noah checks the front door just to see if the intruders run around the house and spots a package sitting on the bench. He checks the whole front yard for the enemy but there's no one around. He ends the video by saying he no longer feels safe in his own home. Two days later, Noah uploads a new video, the unboxing. We learn the box was left outside on the night of the 4th but Noah hasn't touched it out of dread. 
He called the police who came and looked around but couldn't find anything. The box is wrapped in black rope and all information on it has been blacked out. There's a sudden wave of distortion followed by a hidden frame. He knows what I have done. Noah goes to open the box and the camera shuts itself off. He reports this is the third time it had happened in the past week. Noah turns the camera back on and continues opening the box to find an unwound cassette tape inside. Beneath it is a phone, a key, a note, and several electronic parts. The phone screen is broken but the phone itself still works and makes calls though its number has been deactivated by the service provider. A wave of distortion obscures the audio as Noah claims he can probably manage to pull information off of the phone's memory. He picks up the note which reads, The truth lies within. The river's flow is where it begins. When the dawn breaks, the soul awakens. On the back, one last word, Noah. The video ends with Noah saying he'll begin investigating tomorrow. He's exhausted after being up for about three days since the intruder incident. Intense distortion hits when he touches the camera and we're left with one final message in the form of a secret frame. I will wait for you. Going to a local phone store tomorrow to try and extract any information off of this phone. I'll also try to recover what's on the TV tape. Finally getting this video together. My grades are steadily dropping. I hate this. The motion sensor lights in my house keep going off in rooms where there is no motion. Video will be posted within the week. On September 16th, Noah uploads box analysis. He begins by apologizing for the amount of time taken to upload a new video. He still doesn't know what the poem on the note means, but he's aware of what the electronic parts are. They're various pieces from a VCR, a television, and a video camera. None of these pieces come from one single device. Noah managed to extract data from the cell phone with the aid of a phone shop employee. There are three audio clips. Besides the audio, there are several pictures on the phone, a few of which are concerning to see. And finally, the cassette tape. Noah got it wound up again and recovered some of the footage. The video shows a man with brown shoes walking around a playground at night as hidden frames play over the scene, spelling out a message. Do you remember? The man in the playground keeps walking around until he finds what he's looking for.
Noah adds that the playground in the video looks a lot like the one in Victor Park where he went with Milo during their last weekend together. As for the final item from the box, the key, it opens his garage door. Whoever left this package had access to his house. At the end, the secret frame message, forgive me. I find it hard to study when the smallest things startle me. I might move out of this house to a dorm on campus soon. It's just that bad. I hate waking up in a cold sweat and realizing that it was only a dream. I've been having recurring nightmares about that boardwalk. The nightmare I had last night was vivid. I was on the boardwalk at dusk. I couldn't move and I saw someone at the far end of the platform. I found a dead white ibis in my backyard today. The calling of the turkey vultures eating it woke me. Unsettling. I think Milo's mom changed her number. I keep getting the number you have dialed has been disconnected or is not in service at this time. I did ask my parents about it. They weren't in close contact with the Ashers, but they said the numbers don't work either. He was just standing in my closet. I woke up and saw something move and he was there, I swear, but now he's gone. What the fuck is this? I can't. I don't remember posting that last tweet. I don't even recall being up that late to post it. My phone was with me, no one else could have. Can't sleep. Fear of the unknown is a terrible fear. It's odd how, even though the strange occurrences have pretty much ceased, I still feel incredibly paranoid. I really need to calm down. I'm nervous. I swore that I heard the cell phone vibrating from within the box last night, although it might have just been my imagination. Just got up. Had a very bad nightmare, but I don't remember it. Woke up with a terrible nosebleed. I feel sick. Have you gotten any decent sleep this week? No, not at all. The sleeping pills don't really help much, but they do the job. They've given me some fucked up dreams. Most are random and not memorable, but I have recurring dreams of the boardwalk. And it's 4.09 AM. God damn it, fucking insomnia. The ashes seem to have disappeared off the face of the earth. Every method of communication I try yields no reply. I need to reach them. I know this may not be the safest idea, but have you thought about going back to check out the boardwalk? Yes, but I've been too afraid to go alone. My friend Kevin, who translated Carl's German, might come. I'll convince him. Can't. Fucking. Sleep. I'm planning on going back to the boardwalk sometime soon. I just have this urge to go there and check things out. Another nosebleed. On Halloween. How appropriate. The phone rang yet again. I am answering and getting it on tape. The phone rang again, but this time I got it on tape. Video soon. There is more footage on my camera. When the hell did I film this? On November 3rd, Noah uploads his footage of the phone call. A transcript was provided later in the video description. Who is this? <laughs> the fuck is this? Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck this. Oh my god. What the fuck on this side? What 
the fuck you want? In addition to the phone call, Noah provides the extra footage he found on his camera. One last frame underlines what Noah witnessed that night. No escape. The panic attacks come in waves now. I'm close to having a mental breakdown. This fear is static that prevents me from hearing myself. When you're told to cheer up but you have no incentive, it's almost mocking. I'm going to contact Kevin and ask him about the boardwalk soon. to the dark place today. No light graces this place. Eleven, 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 eleven. Hello there. Hello, hello there, 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 there. Hello, hello there, there. Hello there. Hello there. Watching, waiting for you.
I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't know what the fuck happened last night. Just woke up a few minutes ago. I didn't tweet that shit or post that fucking video. I'm still trying to figure things out. I went to sleep and when I woke up, all this shit was posted. I might have been hacked or something. Okay. I've changed all my YouTube, Twitter, and computer login passwords and checked the locks on my doors. I might need to stay with someone. None of my damn friends will let me stay over. To be fair, I've been acting antisocial lately. I need somewhere to stay for Thanksgiving. No family in town. I live in my parents' summer home and commute to classes. I pretty much live alone and have no family here. It's lonely here, especially with all the fucked up shit that's happening. I want to hang with someone. I'd feel safer. No way to head to where your parents are now for Thanksgiving break at least? There's just no way. They live in California and I have no spare travel money. My family's kind of tight on money recently. Anyone nearby up for letting me stay with them for the holidays? I don't want to be alone on Thanksgiving. Message me if you live in Florida. What about Kevin? He's your friend, right? Can't you just stay with him for Thanksgiving? Sure, he's my friend, but I don't know his folks. I've already asked him and he said that his parents won't let me stay. Okay, good news. I think I have someone to stay with for Thanksgiving. When she responds to me on YouTube, I'll make my final decision. I'm staying with Augmented Angel. She's the closest, about 100 miles away. It's far, but I'm willing to drive. Thanks for all the offers. I'm leaving tomorrow, traveling to Sarah, Augmented Angel. Things are really looking up for a change. This is going to be a great Thanksgiving. Having a great time at Sarah's place. Thanks for the awesome dinner. I might have a live stream of us tomorrow on Stick'em. Keep a lookout. Had a pleasant sleep for once in a long while. We're going to have a live stream on Stick'em sometime today. Had a fun time talking to all you guys live on Stick'em. <laughs> Left early. Some shit went down. Don't know where I'm headed. Fuck this. Sorry, Sarah. Been driving on the highway since I left. Very shaken from Saturday. Need to get to class tomorrow. I gotta return home eventually, though. I really don't know what happened. My fucked up memory is playing tricks on me. I'm sleeping in my car tonight. When are you going to drive back home? Maybe Friday. I'm reluctant to return home, but I need to get back. I've been living in my car since the 27th. Woke up to another nosebleed, one of the worst yet. Good thing there was a gas station nearby. Heading home after my classes ended around 7ish. Class let out early and I got back home at about 5.30 p.m. There was an envelope stuck in my front door. My house looks otherwise untouched. I'm opening this thing tomorrow. I'll post a video about what I find inside soon and then I'll go through the Thanksgiving footage. Not happy at all with what's in this envelope. This asshole is really fucking with me. Confusion ensues. Video tomorrow. I keep finding things. This is really fucking freaky. I should have searched harder in my box analysis. Because of these new findings, I'm adding more to the video. I'll post it tomorrow for sure. Also, I have finals coming up and need my rest. On December 6th, the video comes up titled, The Token Letter. I came home today after several days of living in my car on the highway. Uh, after I left Sarah's house the day after Thanksgiving. Um, when I got home, uh, I found an envelope sticking out from between my front doors. Um, had no address information or, or, or any information at all on it besides the word token on the front and obey on the back with an arrow. Inside the envelope, there was bunch of strange shit. First, there was this note, uh, who is more foolish, the boy that is afraid of the dark, or the man that is afraid of the light, and expecting you, this simple thing, this drawing in the middle, question mark. I don't know if it's blood or not. And second, there's just a piece of tissue paper with some shit written on it. This is 
this is this is obviously making fun of my my nosebleeds mocking me. And then we have this this little baggie of white pills. Uh, there's I counted there's sixteen pills and they, 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 they have no idea what they are. And inside there's a little note. Take these, you'll feel better. Um, not gonna take them. Fuck you. Uh, there was a fortune from a fortune cookie in there too. Um, it says, the guilty one is not he who commits the sin, but the one who causes the darkness. I don't know if that has any, any significance or whatever. There's also this key inside as well. Uh, it's broken off at the neck and uh, doesn't really look familiar to me at all. Um, weirdly enough, there's a bunch of sticks and leaves inside. I don't, I don't even know what the hell I'm supposed to make of that. And uh, finally, we have this. Uh, it's a flash drive, USB, and uh, at least a skeleton of one. And I plugged it into my computer to see if it worked, and it did. It had this video file on it. This is what it was. Uh, before I was going to post this video, uh, on a hunch, I decided to take another look in the box, the box that was left outside my house about three months ago, and um, there was an area I realized I hadn't looked in beforehand. The bottom of the box, it's made up of two flaps that could be folded back if, if you force them hard enough. I found this, and this the symbol has been reoccurring in in the letter and a video and flash drive. I have no fucking idea where it's from or what it means. I know this is this is really the first time I've been seeing it. Also, uh, under the flaps there were two things: um, another fortune. The deeper you look, the more you will find. And an old burnt picture of Milo and I. Now, uh, I had given Milo this picture as a file back in 06 before he shut his email account down. And um, I don't know how this fucker got a hold of it. But but maybe he has some connection with Milo. And I have no fucking idea. Okay, um, I really don't know who the fuck this person is, but... They're really fucking with me, and I don't appreciate being fucked with, so if you could step the fuck off, that would be nice. I'm really stressed right now, and all this crazy shit is not helping, so right now I am uh, going to look through my Thanksgiving footage, and I'll post it after I mail down some more. Uh, so, Noah, out. I just realized something. The green scribbles on the note smell like grass, not crayon like I thought. I think leaves were rubbed on it. Ignorance is like morphine. It makes you feel better, but it doesn't help your overall condition, especially if the condition is fear. Going to a local pharmacy to see about these pills after one of my finals.
The pharmacist said that seven of the 16 pills had the antihistamine diphenhydramine in them, Benadryl, but the other nine he couldn't identify. I still have to view that Thanksgiving footage. The break just began and I really don't want to be upset now. I'll get to it soon enough. Turns out that I'm heading to my parents' place for Christmas. I'll post an update if anything unexpected goes down. Happy holidays. Milo had a stepdad for a few years. He left Milo's mom after Milo last visited me. I got his number from my parents. Contacting him soon. Going to have a lonely New Year's at home. My resolution for 2011 is to have a resolution for 2012. It gives me more time to think about it. The year is only just beginning, but so are we. Well, Observer, looks like you broke Noah's password again. As long as you're here, mind answering a few questions? The questions are more important than the answers. I am your follower in the light. I am invisible in the night. I am present in the sun, but not in the rain. I do no harm and feel no pain. What am I? Very astute observations, my children. I am proud of you. How everything you see is a shadow cast by that which we do not see. I will soon return bearing gifts. Fucking damn it! This fucking asshole hacked me again and changed my shit! I went to sleep early because I didn't sleep through New Year's! There. I changed my avatar picture and info back. I'm stepping up my game this time. Heavier encryption, more security. I'm fucking pissed. Until this point, Noah's profile picture on all social media accounts was an image of the Observation Tower in Victor Park. It's only been when the Observer broke in that the current symbol appeared. This John Fletcher guy won't pick up. I'm not giving up yet. He's the only solid lead to the Asher family I have. I'm going to keep trying. Success! Milo's stepdad finally picked up his phone. Apparently he was out for the holidays. Video of the call will be posted tonight. Noah has the video uploaded and we learn from John Fletcher that Mary Asher stopped picking up her phone five months after Milo's funeral. It doesn't really surprise John. She has a history of strange behavior and Mr. Fletcher went as far as to tell Noah that she suffered from psychosis. One of her major consistent hallucinations was a certain Mr. Slim that she kept seeing. Some kind of strange man. That's as much as John can offer for information though. He hasn't been able to reach Mary either. Biked by the boardwalk today. Even though I'm reluctant and afraid to go into it, I have this odd urge to. Fucking terrible nightmare of Thanksgiving. If I don't look at that footage, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Gonna do it within the week. On February 1st, Noah finally uploads the first day of his Thanksgiving trip. It's entirely uneventful, which is a very nice pace for Noah for a change. He meets up with Sarah, they share Thanksgiving, hang out a bit and go to bed. While sleeping, Noah gets up and a wave of distortion rolls through. He comes back, stands for a bit and then slowly sinks back down followed by more distortion. He seems fine after this point of intense breathing and says in the video description, I remember having one of the greatest sleeps I've had in a long time that first night. I don't recall getting up as it shows on the tape. More concerning than Noah's instance of sleepwalking is the first bit of distortion. Look closely. Did you catch it? Let's look again. Who is this? They weren't there a moment ago. And when Noah comes back, they're gone again. But in the final frame of the video, they left us a message. I'm here. Two days later, Noah uploads the rest of the footage from his trip. It's the day after Thanksgiving and he and Sarah are sitting with her friend, Kat, while they broadcast a live stream that went on. There's an instance of distortion while Noah waves the camera around and the next segment consists of the crew playing a board game after getting food. Look, I think I have the best cards. Yeah, these are probably all deadly. I don't know, I have some pretty sweet ones, bro. I mean... I think I'm either gonna go with the one, the second, well, the second one? 
on the end or the end uh, because they're really for deadly. I. It depends. Do you want to go for funny or do you want to go for like realistic? Yeah. We should show Let's take it. Off. Go for it. I don't know. Oh, you guys. This is a good one. I didn't even see I had that one. All right. Choose wisely. Okay. Dealer. I don't know who's who. Okay. Oh, um. <laughs> oh gosh, this is hard. Giant squid or Helen Keller? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to pick Helen Keller. Yes. It's the winning card. And yes. I told you. I freaking told you. Not even. Tree huggers should have won. Tree huggers are getting the same thing. Yes, that's right. I just pulled a Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> Keller. <laughs> Noah's next seen outside with the camera at night for some reason, looking around the backyard. Uh, ne never mind. Are you coming back in? Yeah, it's getting late. Sorry. Okay. Just need to check something out. Nothing. No, it's nothing. Uh, hey guys. Um, we've decided to spend the night over at Sarah's dad's house. Um, his name is Frank, right? Yeah, it's Frank. Uh, we were gonna do some, um, activity tomorrow. I don't know, maybe, uh, uh fishing. But, um, You're gonna like I mean, it. what else could you do here? Uh, but whatever. We're heading there right now. So, uh, see you then. Noah meets Sarah's father, then proceeds to the bathroom to get dressed for bed. Sarah later comes and says she's hearing things and wants to know if he can help check it out. Noah reports seeing nothing, but offers to stay in her room for the night if it'll help, which she agrees to. Sarah soon wakes up and realizes her roommate is gone. She takes the camera and goes on a hunt for him. Hello? Noah? <laughs> no Noah? Why, why the hell are you out here? I don't know. Covered in blood. I don't know. Where'd you get that knife? What happened to you? Sarah, give me the camera. What the hell happened? Give me the fucking camera. <laughs> Sorry. Really sorry for everything that happened. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. But but I can't stay tonight. I I have to go now. But what about I have to go now? Oh Jesus, what the hell's going on out here? Listen. What was that?
And to match its counterpart, this video had a final frame message. Soon you will join us. It's clear that much more happened during Noah's Thanksgiving than he anticipated. His reason for hesitating to upload is far too clear now, but that's no surprise considering how each new upload only seems to bring more misfortune down around him. Whoever's observing him is adamant in making sure he knows and keeps bringing up more surprises, including break-ins to Noah's Twitter and YouTube channel. What does this entity want with him? How do they keep getting in so easily both to Noah's house and his online accounts? Who is the observer? And how did they follow him all the way to Sarah's house and slip in undetected? We'll explore all that and more in part two of Tribe 12 Explained. I believe we've watched Noah suffer enough for one night. Don't worry though, there's a lot more to come from all of us observing on the outside soon. If you've enjoyed the start of Tribe 12 Explained, feel free to hit the like button and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on part 2 as soon as it airs. And just like Noah, I enjoy keeping the community informed outside of YouTube on both Twitter and Tumblr. Come and stop by for news, updates, and curiosities that don't quite fit in the frame of a new video upload. Thanks again for joining me in the dark this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like the man that's been breaking into your house at night, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.